And with the medical industry, the pharmaceutical industry, what's their primary mission? By law, they have to look out for their shareholders. So they're in the industry of creating customers, not cures. This one is becoming a huge problem. The MRI with a gadolinium-based contrasting agent. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot more GBCA toxicity and the problems are huge. So, first of all, there is no GBCA or gadolinium-based contrasting agent that's safe, not one. Um, it's a neurotoxic. And most victims are unaware of the risks because they're never given the pamphlet to read before they approve getting injected with this to make the uh, MRI more readable. They don't even need it because uh, it's just to help or assist the technicians read the, the information. So the people who are suffering with gadolinium toxicity, uh, they have symptoms including deep bone pain. This is the top of the list. Uh, most of them have uh, extreme bone pain. They've got swelling or tightening of the skin. It actually looks like it's wooded. It's turned into wood. Um, burning, itching pain at the affected site where it was injected. Muscle weakness, yellow plaques in the eyes, brain fog, foggy vision, and severe nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, which is um, very debilitating. So if you've ever had an MRI, check to see if they used a GBCA to uh, have that um, read better because uh, you more than likely have uh, gadolinium toxicity. Yes, ma'am. You know how they say that, you know, you can excrete the GBCAs? Is that a true statement or just... It'll do some, but unfortunately, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a huge number of uh, the chelated yeah. uh, gadolinium that is being released, and it's actually winding up in the bone, the brain, and tissues. Okay, so it's not, totally not totally eliminated. It's totally not being eliminated. It's lasting for six years or more. In fact, right down there, it's being retained for six years or more. So, yeah. And these symptoms manifest slowly, so most people have no way to connect their problem with the MRI. So they're, they're experiencing these symptoms years after, you know, or even months, weeks, some even hours. But the thing is, is they don't connect the dots. Uh, and it's often misdiagnosed, and Lyme is one of many things it's misdiagnosed as. So, and like I said, it does retain in the, in the body for six years or more. So if you've ever had an MRI, get tested for gadolinium. It is a heavy metal. As a matter of fact, Chuck Norris and his wife Gina have sued the manufacturer of uh, one of the um, test uh, pieces because she got really messed up with this. Uh, wow. And uh, I'm not sure what ever happened with this lawsuit, but um, there's a face that everybody knows. They have been fighting this for the longest time. Mm -hmm. So what about chelation? So we remember this, remember this slide here with the metals in the blood. What happens with chelation is they inject usually a chemical into the vein which then binds with some of the heavy metals. Not all of them, but some. So you get a little bit of a bonding going on there, but that's about all that happens. They flow through the body and go back through the liver and the kidneys through enterohepatic recirculation and then who knows what happens to them at that point. Yes, ma'am. Is the chelation only for heavy metals, or is it also for those chemicals? Only for heavy metals, oh. and only certain heavy metals. Okay. Is chelation kind of like the liver? <clears throat> the liver functions when it chelates. Uh, it acts like a, you know, talking about well, chelation is uh, chelating is where two ions are binding together to get yeah. uh, a bond, and usually that makes things more, uh, or I should say, less toxic. Yeah, uh, Right, and that's to bind with whatever is causing the problem. And uh, the the problem is that these chelating agents aren't as great as they they are. And you're about to find that out too, right here. So they're effective against acute poisoning. And yes, I do agree with chelation when there's acute metal toxicity. So if there's been a, a poisoning of uh, mercury or lead or something like that, absolutely chelation. They form that non-toxic complex, like I showed you, where they bind. Now, they remove the metal from soft tissues, but not necessarily the deep fat, all right? 
And I did mention that oral therapy is available, but usually it's injected. So they're putting a chemical into your bloodstream. I did say a chemical to bind with these metals, but then they don't really give them a good exit strategy. Uh, so that is why I'm not a big fan of this. And the types of metals, oops, excuse me, types of metals are mercury, lead, iron, and arsenic that we know that they chelate well with. Um, the drawbacks here is that uh, the redistribution of the toxic metal is basically because there's not, not an exit strategy provided for these things. Uh, there's the essential metal loss of copper and calcium, so you're actually losing good metals as well as the bad metals. There's no removal of metal from the intracellular sites. That would be inside the fat cell. So really, there's nothing that's uh, getting inside the fat that medical science has to offer. Uh, hepatotoxicity is, uh, and nephrotoxicity is the liver and the kidneys basically are beaten up by the, this whole process. Um, and unfortunately, there's poor, poor clinical recovery with chelation therapy. It's a pro-oxidant effect, so it's not antioxidant, which means that it's actually uh, negatively affecting your body, it's aging you. So, and uh, people, you know, report headache, nausea, increased blood pressure. So, basically, what I am saying here is chelation is the only thing they can offer, but as you will see here from this study, most of the conventional chelators are compromised with many side effects and drawbacks and there is no safe and effective treatment available for heavy metal poisoning. So what that's saying is there is nothing that the medical world can offer in the case of xenobiotic poisoning. And that could be chronic or acute. 